Today on Cyberwork Hacks, I've invited James Stanger of CompTIA to discuss their Pentest Plus certification. So you're going to be learning about basically the steps that you take as a pen tester, which is different, really, uh, than the steps you take as a hacker. Now, I know a lot of you are all in on careers in pen testing, blue teaming, red teaming, internet response, and more. And James explains the ins and outs of the Pentest Plus certification, which is part of our Pentest Plus bootcamp. You'll understand uh, network discovery, social engineering, vulnerability analytics, how to do exploitation, spreading from one system to the next, elevating privileges, things like that. As well as some hands-on activities you can do and put onto your resume to show employers you really have what it takes to do the big work in pen testing and ethical hacking. The best pen testers are the people who spend time as a tech support person or as a cloud person. I once knew a great pen tester. My goodness, this, was, this guy was the prince of darkness. He started as an email administrator for Yahoo back in the day. It's all on today's episode of Cyberwork Hacks. The IT and cybersecurity job market is thriving. Bureau of Labor Statistics predicts 377,500 new IT jobs annually. You need skill and hustle to obtain these jobs, of course, but the good news is that cybersecurity professionals can look forward to extremely competitive salaries. That's why InfoSec has leveraged 20 years of industry experience drawing from multiple sources to give you, Cyberwork listeners, an analysis of the most popular and top-paying industry certifications. You can use it to navigate your way to a good-paying cybersecurity career. So to get your free copy of our Cybersecurity Salary Guide ebook, just click the link in the description below. It's right there near the top, just below me. You can't miss it. Click the link in the description and download our free Cybersecurity Salary Guide ebook. Your cybersecurity journey starts here. Now, let's get the show started. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Cyberwork Hacks. The purpose of the spinoff of our popular Cyberwork podcast is to take a single fundamental question and give you a quick, clear, and actionable solution and a new insight into how to utilize InfoSec products and training to achieve your work and your career goals. So uh, my guest today is James Stanger from CompTIA. That's the Computing Technology Industry Association. Uh, James has joined me on several past episodes, several hacks, a couple of main feed episodes. We talked about Data Plus, we talked about Cloud Plus. We talked about the security trifecta. We've talked about um, uh, CYSA plus. We've 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 run the gamut here. So uh, uh, today I wanted to talk uh, about the concept of pen testing. We talked recently with InfoSec's bootcamp instructor Akil Phillips for the Certified Ethical Hacking and Pen Test Plus Dual Cert Bootcamp. Um, and now Akil had talked about CEH a, a bit, and I want James to come in and talk primarily about how the Pen Test Plus Cert works and how it can be leveraged into your first pen testing career. So, uh, James, thanks very much for joining me today. Anytime, man, anytime. It's always fun talking about pen testing and things like that. Red yeah, absolutely, and that's uh, that's what our, our listeners have told us uh, abundantly, that that's what they want to hear about. So uh, right. so I hope you all are, 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 are leaning in close for this one. So, James, let's, let's start with the sort of parameters of the Pen Test Plus certification. What are the areas of study that you're going to deal with in this exam and the certification, and what type of work with the certification prepare you for? So you're going to be learning about basically the steps that you take as a pen tester, which is different really uh, than the steps you take as a hacker. Because as a pen yes. tester, you're going to do things like planning and scoping the attack, which includes a contract. And that's one of the, uh, I, I guess it's not really a joke, but I, uh, you know, what's the difference between a pen tester and a hacker? And the answer is jail time. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, but the answer For is sure. a contract. Yeah. Do you have a statement mm. at work that says, you know, the, and it's kind of a get out of jail free card yeah. because it's part of the planning and scoping. I've done pen testing and I, we, we sat down and wrote out the contract and, and I had a copy of the contract with me as I went in and did physical pen testing, because if I blew it, cause I went in, I would sneak in at night. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And right. if I blew it, I'd get arrested. And at least I had, you know, can you call this number? And then hopefully I wouldn't spend the night in jail. Uh, and I'd, I'd get out and it was like, okay, I see it. So planning and testing. Then you understand the hacker life cycle from the attacker's perspective, how to mm -hmm. do reconnaissance and footprinting. Um, you understand uh, network discovery, social engineering, vulnerability analytics, how to do exploitation, spreading from one system to the next, ex, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, 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 elevating privileges, things like that. Yeah. That's uh that's all, all stuff that, uh, I think is, is very exciting. So I'll, I want to talk about some of the key career paths that that can branch off from the solid foundation that you can find on the pen test plus because sure. all the all the certs we've talked about so far uh there's always the sort of the role that you think you're you're aiming to get with that specific cert you know uh 
CYSA plus, oh, I'm going to be a SOC analyst, but there's other things that you can use that with. Pentest plus, I imagine there's a, a similar thing here. So uh, are there any other maybe related career paths or specialties that would also benefit from someone who's Pentest plus certified? There are so many adjacent job roles with that. So if there are okay. people who I know who have gone from pen testing into a GRC, a governance risk management and mm -hmm. compliance perspective, um, uh, 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 that some people would say, well, wait a minute, pen testing is very technical and GRC is less technical. It's like, actually, you know, technical becomes a pregnant word, as it were. So you can yeah. move uh, over into that uh, job role very nicely. You can become a threat hunter, which is kind of a combination yeah. of pen testing and blue teaming, people call it purple teaming, but the idea of understanding, how can I really understand the threat atta attack surface of, a, of the bank I work for, or the healthcare okay. company I work for, or the manufacturer, things like that. Uh, uh, other things, you could become a vulnerability manager, a vulnerability hmm. analyst, as it were. Somebody who, instead of doing actual pen testing, right, uh, that will be a part of it, but you'll kind of understand the entire uh, what it means to update systems in a systematic way so that you can manage various vulnerabilities. That's, that's a significant thing. Um, yeah. It is not trivial to update systems. Yeah, that, in, that, that in also pen. sort of leans in with, with GRC, I imagine, as well, because you're, anything that's not, you know, any vulnerabilities that aren't patched, you're, you're taking a calculated risk, whether, you know, it's because you don't have the money or time or because you think that your money or time is better spent elsewhere, right? That's right. And you know, it's interesting, the, the job roles having to do with risk management, you know, there are entire job roles about, uh, you know, for example, um, uh, ISACA does a fantastic job of going into its CISM, CISA uh, type of uh, 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 risk management kind of job roles. You see pen testers going into that area. That's much more buttoned down, as it yeah. were, I suppose. But uh, there's nothing wrong with that, too. Uh, yeah. Your career can uh, lead you to a lot of different places in the same way that a good pen tester can pivot and, uh, in other words, make choices. Okay, okay, I've, I've gotten my initial access. Now where do I go? You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've got in on Kerberos or I got in on an Active Directory hack. You know, where can I go? What next system? It's kind of the same way with your career in pen testing. A lot of different. A yeah, lot of different. Love that. Love that. Uh, so, uh, you know, the most common comment we hear on cyber work is from people who are just trying to get started in cybersecurity. And a lot of them kind of get overwhelmed by the number of possible uh, directions that you could take in your study and your career. And, and there's a lot of, well, what if I, what if I choose the wrong one? What if I learn something that it's not useful? And then I've, you know, wasted a year of my life or whatever. Can, can we break down a few of the first steps that people who are interested in things like pen testing, ethical hacking and related careers should consider when mapping out their, their early careers and study plans? Well, first thing is, um, you can't become a pen tester unless you understand the mechanism of pen testing. And I don't mean the application. Now, that make, that yeah. makes you what they used to call anyway, a script kitty. Uh, yeah. You need to understand those foundations. DNS, for example. Yep. You need to understand. So you have to have that well in hand. Mm -hmm. The best pen testers are the people who spend time as a tech support person or as a cloud person. I once knew a great pen tester. My goodness. This, was, this guy was the prince of darkness. Uh, uh, and he started as an email administrator for Yahoo back in the day. Remember when mm -hmm. Yahoo existed? Uh, mm -hmm. He was a head of email and he, you know, and the, the pen testing bug, specifically physical pen testing. But he had to start by uh, knowing, you know, what are the various areas of an attack surface from people to physical uh, stuff uh, to the logical to operational technology, things like that. Does that help? Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, that, that's, I think that's, that's exactly what I was, yeah, what I was looking for in, in, in regards to this. So, uh, you know, uh, talking about pen testing and, and the sort of like, you're really getting into kind of the guts of the machine when you're, when you're doing this, all, all cybersecurity roles have some sure. hands-on component of some sort, but, but more than most pen testing is a job that really requires you to have practical hands-on experience especially when you're looking for a job, you know, the tools, the techniques, the strategies, like you said, not just being a script kitty and pushing a button and making the tool go off, but like, what are some tips or resources you can suggest for students who want to use the pen test plus for baseline now that would need a practical space where they could get their hands like dirty and try out tactics in a low-risk so, environment? Certainly through CERT Master Learn, we have tons of labs that will teach you very specific things about, mm -hmm. for example, uh, uh, working with uh, a, a kind of a SQL injection attack or, yeah. or mapping out what that is. What are those steps that you can do to like discover, hey, can I get past uh, the, the code, as it were, uh, the obvious code, 
and get in there and start doing arbitrary execution of code. So understand the essentials. It's very hands-on. Understanding how databases work. Do you understand how to, you know, what, if a database is a series of tables, do you understand how to do those selects? Do you understand SQL? Um, there are essential technologies that you want to know. And so hands-on, to me, create a play space. Uh, whether it be yeah. certain master learn, they, they create that for you. If you don't have that, that's fine. Um, I have, um, I use VirtualBox and I download a lot of Linux systems and databases and everything. And I just start playing and I yeah. throw rocks at servers and I see if I can break them and get in. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and all my own stuff, right? Yeah. I don't yeah, do that on your own time. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Right. I don't do that on anybody else's stuff. That would be bad. Absolutely. Really? Yeah. Throw, 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 throw rocks at your own windows. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, and tech, I like that. Yeah, because I have some Windows systems that I throw rocks at. I oh, take perfect. Them. All right. And how do we go? I, I, I doubled up on that. Didn't even know. Uh, go. All right. So uh, as we wrap up today, James, uh, do you have any tips or advice for listeners who might be studying for the Pentest Plus exam? Like what 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 sort of study tips do you have to kind of make sure you're ready to go when the you test bet. comes? First of all, I would uh, spend a lot of time looking at those objectives. Make sure that you understand them. And can you do something practical with each of those objectives, you know, yes. you know, uh, not just theoretical. So that's one of the first things. Second, um, ask around, you know, uh, through mm -hmm. LinkedIn or, or people, you know, or whatever, talk mm -hmm. with pen testers and, and ask them specific questions that will help you a lot too. Love it. All right. Well, James Stanger, this has been so much fun. Thanks so much for your insight. Dick. I appreciate it. Uh, and as always, thank you for watching this, this episode of Cyborg Hacks. If you enjoyed the video and felt that it helped you, uh, tell someone about it, whether it's a friend or a colleague, your social media connections, anyone you like. Uh, we really appreciate the word of mouth, and it really does help us uh, grow the uh, the network here. And if you haven't, uh, you can subscribe to our podcast feed and our YouTube page. Just go to type in Cyberwork Infosec at either of them. It, it does come up pretty easily. Or you can go to infosecinstitute.com slash podcast to see the full list, uh, whatever you like. And uh, sign up for notifications or auto-download so you don't miss anything because Cyberwork is now coming out every other Thursday, somewhere hacked specifically with these bite-sized answers to your questions. Uh, lots more with James Stanger, lots more to come. Uh, until next time, uh, keep learning, keep developing your skills, and as always, have fun. Bye, everybody.